Gardeners often start plants like peppers and tomatoes and eggplants indoors before moving out to the garden. But have you ever thought about doing that with potatoes? Join me today as I start my potato plants indoors. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and it is a beautiful early spring day in my Colorado garden. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and it's 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, right now, it's that cold. But it's a dry cold, and I'm used to it, so I don't need to be bundled up. While it's okay for me, it's much too cold for any of my plants to be growing in my garden, especially potatoes. So that's why I'm doing all of this indoors. Now, when it's that cold outside, I can only spend a few minutes out there before I get cold too. But when it comes to the plants, they can't handle temperatures that cold at all. Potatoes are a pretty hardy plant. They can handle temperatures down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit before you might see damage on them. But when it comes to planting our potatoes, we really should have a soil temperature that's at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And to get to that point, we need to have warm days. I've measured my soil temperature and it isn't yet 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I want to start my potatoes, I need to wait. And I did a video a couple years ago that shows the entire process I use for growing my potatoes. And I started them a month from right now. This year, I want to get an early start. These are some of the potatoes that I grew in my greenhouse last year. I harvested just a few months ago when it was cold and snowy outside. And I've already started the chitting process by letting these potatoes begin to sprout. Chitting is when you expose your seed potatoes to warm temperatures and some light, and they'll begin naturally growing. You've probably had this happen in your pantry with the potatoes that were just left in a nice warm environment. But when they don't have the light, they get those long white sprouts growing. By having light associated with the chitting process, you can get one of these really nice sturdy sprouts that the plant will grow from. This is the kind of thing that you want to do when you're growing potatoes. And normally, I would start the process right now and then in a month, put the seed potatoes in the ground. But instead, I started chitting a whole month early because I want to get these potatoes in soil a whole month early. And you're probably wondering why I want to do that. What's the advantage? Well, just like the potato plants can't handle really cold temperatures, they don't like really hot temperatures either. And here in my Colorado garden, I go pretty quickly from the really cold days to the really hot days. And while I get a pretty good potato harvest, when the temperatures get that warm, the plant slows down and it really doesn't produce as well in really hot conditions. So by starting earlier, I'm giving my plants in my region more time to grow during the ideal temperatures that they like. When the daytime temperatures are ranging between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, they really like those temperatures. Much below that, much above that, it could be a problem. And that's why the indoor starting can really give me an advantage in my season. Now, I'm not going to be starting these seed potatoes in a pot like I would with peppers or eggplants and tomatoes and then transplant them in the garden. Instead, I'll be starting them in a container, in this case, a grow bag, and they will grow their entire lives in this grow bag. Potatoes don't transplant well from a pot into the ground. So I'm starting to see potatoes in this indoors 
And this is what I'll end up moving outside when those temperatures are ideal. I begin by putting about six inches of my potting soil blend in the bottom of this bag. The mix I'm using is a blend of both coconut coir and peat moss, perlite, worm castings, compost, and some IB organic fertilizer that not only has the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but it's got calcium and magnesium and sulfur and iron. All of that should give this a nice light consistency that those tubers will be able to grow in and also enough nutrients for the plants to develop well. On top of this soil, I'm going to put in my seed potatoes with the sprouts pointing up. Now these are small enough that I'm just going to go ahead and put in the entire seed potato. This one is big enough I could cut it into two pieces, but I only have five of these marvelous magic molly potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and grow all of them in this bag. And once they're in place, now I'll cover them with more of this potting mix. The key to being able to start your potatoes a whole month early is that these grow bags are portable. You can move them when and where you need them to be. Now for the next month, they're going to be here in my grow room for most of the time. And as they start sprouting, I've got lights to put them under. But once the weather improves and I get more sustained warm days, I can begin moving them outside. Now a soft bag like this, when I lift it, it does move the soil around the edges. I'm not that worried about those potatoes that are growing in the middle having their roots disturbed, but it is a consideration. So a five gallon bucket with a hard plastic side might be a better option. You want to have at least three gallons of soil per potato. And so because I've got this, which is about a 15 gallon bag, I can grow those five seed potatoes. They're a little tight and that will impact the size of the tuber, but these magic mollies are a fingerling potato, so they're going to be small anyway. I'm not worried about them interfering with each other. And with this nice rich soil and the fertilizer added, they should do just fine. Without grow lights during the critical growing phase when they're young, go ahead and bring them outside. I can go ahead and put these on my deck next to my other containers that I'm growing garlic in. Now, it's still too cold today. The sun is only one of the important considerations. So I'm actually going to put these back in the house where it's warm until I have both sun and warm for these plants to grow. You can expect that there will be a good amount of labor involved when you start your potatoes this way. For the first phase of their growth below the soil surface, they don't need to be moved at all. I started with a moist potting mix and I'll just keep it moist. That's enough for the plants to begin growing. But once they break the surface, and even as a small seedling, they're going to need that light. For the sunlight, that means moving them outside, if it's warm enough, or putting them under lights. And then assuming that the night is too cold, bringing them back indoors. So it may be an in and out, an in and out process for a number of days. And then when it starts warming up at night, when the temperatures are regularly above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll just put them in their final location and my potatoes can grow and never be moved again until it comes time to harvest. I expect to have a relatively early harvest. Now, starting early is different than growing early potatoes. 
early potatoes are a type of potato, usually determinant, that gives you a harvest pretty soon in the season. But by starting like this, you can even grow the mid and late potatoes and get a harvest earlier because you started earlier. If you want to see more about how I grow my potatoes, go ahead and watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.